On the remote island of Orkney, north of Scotland, is the remains of an ancient village called Scara Bray. Built around 3100 BC, it was occupied for some 600 years. As a chattel Hoyuk, it's thought shamans here believed they could commune with the dead. But at Skara Bray, shamanic flights to the afterlife were not launched from simple shrine rooms. On ancient Orkney, the people used launch pads of unprecedented sophistication. This grave, known as Maze Howe, is one of the finest structures of prehistoric Europe. Its simple grass covering hides a chamber built from a complex arrangement of stone. Orkney shamans are thought to have come here to receive inspiration and knowledge from the dead. One extraordinary feature of this site you cannot see, you can only feel. Helmsholtz resonance is the, the effect that you get when you blow across the neck of a bottle. So, And that's the, the same effect that we'd expect to get in a tomb like Maze Howe, with the column of air in the neck of the bottle being the column of air in the passage, and then the, the sort of volume of the bottle being the actual main chamber of the tomb. Dave Keating and Aaron Watson from Reading University in England, have come to measure the acoustic effects in Mays Howe. It's possible the Helmholtz resonance inside this passage grave could alter the consciousness of those within and explain why ancient Europeans believed they could talk to the dead. Tests with a scale model suggest the sound frequencies produced here could be around two cycles per second well below the audible range. Human hearing only goes down to around about 20 hertz and at frequencies below that we tend to, to feel the sensation you know, in the body cavities shake and things like that and as the frequencies get lower we become less and less aware of them but uh, it's been shown that they can still have a very profound effect on us so we may not even be aware that they're there and they're still affecting us. OK, Aaron. Um, I think what we'll try doing is, if you just take the drum and give a good waft, yeah. and then we can see what frequency the air... So near the entrance to the passage, then? Yeah, just give me one okay. good waft. By simply waving a drum, the Reading team set a pulse of air bouncing back and forth across the chamber. That's lovely. A resonant pulse of inaudible sound. So that shows us the resonant frequency of the whole tomb. Okay. Is, is this about 1.6 hertz? So by moving the air once, it's created this reaction that continues? That's right. I think probably what we want to try now is you at the entrance of the, the tunnel. To test their theory further, Keating and Watson introduced the repetitive sound of a drum, the instrument most likely used during rituals at the site. OK, Aaron, I've got the DAT running so you can start drumming any time you want. Two drum beats per second, the same frequency at which the tomb resonates, produces a strong reading on their instruments. Not from the sound of the drum beat, but from the inaudible Helmholtz resonance. Here you can see the, the drum beats, but look in between, you can see this lovely Helmholtz resonance. Yeah. You see that? And that's, that's the whole tomb just resonating away each time you yeah, kick it you with the really drum. You can really see that, can't you? Yeah. The actual sound pressure levels that, that we measured in May's Howe, um, we had about 135 decibels. Now, uh, if, if you sort of equate that to a, an audible frequency, that's a very, very loud sound, you know, equivalent to, to something like a jet engine, louder than a rock concert. Um, of course, you can't even hear it, <laughs> but it's there at this extremely high level. Could this powerful resonance alter the brain waves of those in the chamber? Keating and Watson are about to find out. 
Wired to a portable EEG, David Keating assumes the role of the shaman. After a few minutes of drumming, David's brain waves have begun to slow, showing heightened theta activity, typical of the twilight state at the edge of sleep. As the drumming continued for a while, I could feel as though my body was going asleep. Now, Normally, if you're dropping off, you kind of lose focus and concentration and come to suddenly as, as your head nods forward. But in, in this instance, I, I was aware of my head dropping forward slowly and snatching back again, as though I was a, an outside observer of my own body. Dave? How do you feel? I feel fine. Uh, it, it was odd. I, I, I could feel my, my body falling asleep, mm. but my brain was still awake still with it. You know? Right. The results at Mays Howe don't surprise consciousness researcher Skip Atwater. He believes over thousands of years, from the first caves to the elaborate tombs, shamans were refining the power of sound to send them on journeys beyond the body. That's why we see these very interesting, slow beating instruments by the ancients, whether they be didgeridoos setting up a harmonic vibration, whether they be rhythmic drumming, or the raking of just shells across a rough surface in order to create a rhythmic sound in the lower frequency ranges. Atwater suggests altered states may be the key to solving the most debated ancient mystery of all time the origins of the pyramids.